And uh, we move on to Alessandra de Molder uh, from the University of Antwerp, uh, which is a member of the Reed Co-op. Okay, good afternoon. I am Alessandra de Mulder, and today I will talk about creating a workflow uh, to trace consumer values in London auction ads. Let's delve right in. Uh, very shortly put, my research is about why people decided to buy what they did. And for this, I look at buzzwords in auction ads. These auction ads were placed after debt, bankruptcy, or moving abroad, and basically listed the possessions of the person that left, died, or went bankrupt. And, for example, we could find a test to bet, as you can see on the left, I think, for you guys, uh, which might be described as having beautiful chintz cotton hangings, um, or a sideboard, like you can see, on the right, which might be described as being from mahogany, having an inlaid top, or having a beautifully carved feet. I look at 18th century London because this is a time and place where new and fast-paced consumption patterns emerged. I work inductively, I let the sources speak for themselves, so to say, and I work on a large scale. To get this large scale, I created, um, I gathered a lot of data manually and I also cleaned it manually. I have over 5,000 pages of printed auction ads, which I supplemented with other printed sources, such as philosophical, philosophical treatises, furniture manuals, which are basically interior guidebooks um, according to one design guru and auction catalogs. I also use handwritten um, account books um, as well. The printed material I ran through transcribers. Um, I um, trained a model for which I achieved a 15% character error rate on the training set and a 1.89% uh, character error rate on the validation set. My methodology is two-pronged. First, I do a distant reading in the form of digital text analysis, neighbor analysis, amongst other things. And then I do a close reading. I do keyword search and other things for contextualization. Now, after performing one of these digital text analysis, I found about 500 boars being offered for sale. Classical boars, boar cases, boars of prints, collection of balls, valuable stock of modern balls. And these appear consistently throughout my research period. So I, did, I opened up Transcribers again. Um, I did a simple search with word preview and found that balls were actually books being misread. We can see here books of prints, collections of books, valuable stock of modern books. Now, in the first instance, I can see why this has happened. The other ones are a bit more of a mystery. But this example shows that next to spelling variations, it's actually um, a tra transcription variations also can have major um, implications for corpus analysis, both distant and close. Unfortunately, not all of these conundrums can be solved by a simple search. For example, my second example will show this. Here, I created a scatter plot which shows the semantic shift of beautiful between 1760 and 1780. What we would expect here is beautiful to shift away uh, from words related to making an object such as handmade or finished to the objects themselves as uh, being described as beautiful. We can read about beautiful diamonds, wardrobe, and butts. Now, I think we all know that sex is a popular marketing strategy nowadays, but I did find it a bit odd that this would be the case in the 18th century, so I delved a little deeper, and I found two more plausible explanations. On the one hand, it turns out that butts was a popular add-on for locations, such as Lambeth Butts here, where the auctioneer, Mr. William, held his viewings. On the other hand, it is also a unit of volume, or a large cask used to store liquids, typically varying in capacity from 108 to 140 gallons. These casks would probably show up in the possessions of a brewer or a wholesale mine, uh, wine merchant that went abroad, bankrupt, or died. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to any remarks or questions after this session or at another point uh, in this conference. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much for your presentation.